I know you're here. Uh, we hope this service uh, uh, blesses your heart today. And uh, before we uh, before we get started, we're gonna start some icebreakers. Uh, sorry, kids, if this ain't no prizes. I'm just gonna check on uh, if you're paying attention to Sunday school. <laughs> so come on up. I need two volunteers. Let's try one from Ontario youth and one from our. Our, our never got middle schoolers, two middle schoolers. One from our youth and one from Ontario.
Colossians chapter 3, verse. Chapter 1, verse 8. Wait, 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 wait. Genesis chapter 1, verse 8. Genesis chapter 1, verse 8. Wait. Nope. Ten, one, one. Get close. Get close. Get close. Hey. Good job, Good job. All right, this next game is for our littles. I want our, our littlest kids. Oh, we got one up in the right side. What's your name? Sorry. You're United? You're United, so you go to Sunday school? Okay. Can I have uh, one more little, either Taima, Nelly, or Molina? Or even Amasai? Amasai, you want to do it again? Yeah. Okay. They look the same age. Come kids, come. You guys are a little too short for the table. So. Come right here. Come on, Sire. That's not you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys a Bible question. Is that okay? Yeah. The United sounds ready, guys. Alright. The United Who did God tell to build the ark? Israel. 
Thank you for everyone who is here. 
In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. So I would pray very hard for worship. We just ask that you just lean into the spirit, all right? That you just be open and, you know, let go. Whatever baggage that you came with, that you just let go and give it to God so that you can worship him freely. Hallelujah. Sing along with us today. Been afraid, been afraid to say what's here. Because of what you might feel. Should I hide it or tell it? Should I hide it or tell it? Been afraid to tell the truth. Cause I'm scared of losing you. Will you see me the same? Will you see me?
Jesus, 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 say I'm calling you. 
we just say, Lord, that we continue to thank you, Lord, for these things, Lord, just to help us go throughout our day, Lord. But we especially thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, Lord, who went out to Calvary, Lord, 2,000 years ago, just to die for the sins of the world, Lord. He didn't have to do it, but he still chose to go on there just to die for, for each and every one of us, Lord, for you and I, Lord. And we just say thank you, Lord, for that ultimate sacrifice on Calvary, Lord, that you paid for us, Lord. And so, Lord, we just come before you, Lord, with just our needs, Lord, as a, as a church, as a community, Lord. Um, just to lift up all of our families and friends, Lord, who are currently, Lord, um, sick at this time, Lord. Those who are in the hospital, Lord, we pray for healing upon uh, Brother Betsy right now, Lord. Whatever is wrong with him, Lord, we just pray that you continue just to be with him, Lord, at this time, Lord. That you continue to heal him, Lord, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord, that it's only through you, Lord, that he is healed, Lord. We proclaim healing upon his life, Lord. Yes. Pray healing upon his body, Lord. We say all these things, Lord. Just also pray for our brother, David, for yes. at this time as well, Lord. Yes. We're just going through, we just got done with surgery, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you continue to be with the doctors and as well as parents, Lord, just to be with them. Uh, it may be tough right now, Lord. Uh, just continue just to minister to him, Lord, at this time, Lord. Continue to heal him as well from the top of his head. So the soles of his feet, Lord. But also, all of our church families, Lord, friends, who may also be feeling under the weather at this time, Lord, that you just continue to heal them, Lord, whether it's COVID, Lord, cancer, um, those who are going through uh, dialysis, Lord, or who have diabetes, Lord, at this time, Lord, those who are in need help of mental health, Lord, or just issues, Lord. I just pray healing upon their lives, Lord. Because you are the doctor of all doctors, Lord. There's no one else, Lord, that we can turn only to you. So we say these things, Lord, and we proclaim healing upon all of our church, Lord, not just here, but all around the world, Lord. So we say these things, Lord, and we continue to proclaim it, Lord, upon their lives, Lord. And especially, Lord, at this time, Lord, for our youth, Lord, we just lift up our youth at this time. We're in a world right now where things may be out of place, Lord, or there are people within our lives, Lord, that these kids may come across, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you help them, help them, Lord, to stand firm in your word, Lord, that this world may try to manipulate them, Lord, that this world may try to tear them down, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that all these lessons, all these teachings, Lord, that they have gone through, Lord, that you just continue just to be with them, Lord. Just to minister to them, Lord, within their lives, Lord, so that way they can minister to others, Lord. Um, especially, Lord, for this, the word, Lord, that would be brought forth, Lord, from our brother, uh, Johnny, Lord, at this time. I just pray, Lord, that whatever word you have planted within him uh, to bring forth to our youth, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you just continue to be with him, Lord, to bring forth your word. And we just say all these things, Lord, because we love you, Lord. Continue to be with all of our families all around the world those near and far, as well as the remaining of our service, Lord. And we love you. Praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Noah. It's good to have Noah back with us. Amen. All right. Greetings, everybody. I feel like I can't see most of you. It's hot in here, but the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Uh, on behalf of our uh, senior pastor and first lady, David and Lisa Mamea, we greet you all in the name of our what? Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, our visitors, welcome. Our special uh, our youth group tonight from Ontario. We welcome you guys tonight. Um, we like to say that this is not, you're not a visitor. This is your home away from home. So you're not a visitor, you are one of us, amen? Yeah. Okay, now it is, sorry. Okay, now is another uh, important part of our service. Through your worship is giving, praise the Lord. Yeah. I like to call up Mafi and Jonathan for our offering, please. I'll pray, guys. Come on. <laughs> You're looking at me like, oh my God, who's going to pray? <laughs> Alright, boys. 
Jesus. Let us pray. Let all of us in Tamal, I'm at his own here. I'm in a city. Tamal, I'm all of you. I'm a Yaki. I'm a year of my now. I'm a year of my life. 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 I
I don't know if my husband will you want to sing a song? Sing a song! Sing a song, Johnny! We're just gonna um we're gonna ask Sister Nels to come forward. We just get a couple of minutes. the scenes, you know, um, it all plays a part, right? 
you know, all the little things that we do, even those who are running media, you know, right now, you know, it's been a blessing to someone out there that just needs to hear the worship, that needs to hear, you know, whatever's happening in service. So I thank you all for your hearts, um, your, your servanthood. You know, it's always a privilege, it's always an honor to stand before um, a group and share the word of God. So first and foremost, uh, I want to thank God for this opportunity. Because without Him, you know, uh, this day wouldn't be possible. Sorry, I'm still getting used to the, the church being kind of this far, this far and this far. I'm trying to make sure I look at everyone. I was told at school that you have to try and make eye contact with everyone. So bear with me. Um, but you know, first and foremost, I thank God for this opportunity. Secondly, I want to honor, you know, uh, the man and woman of this house. Yeah. Senior Pastor David Mamel and First Lady Article yeah. Mamlisa. Thank you so much. You know, uh, growing up as a young kid in church, I've always been told that you don't just get anyone to stand behind your pulpit, you know, or God's pulpit, because you have to be mindful of that. Not that it, you can't have, have anyone and everyone, and everyone, but you have to be mindful of that. So I, you know, I thank you so much for Taylor and Molina and all. Um, I want to thank also uh, Brother Wills and Sister Laura, I believe, who look after the youth as well. Thank you for this opportunity. Woo! You know, uh, it's funny when Sister asked me to, and you know, said, uh, would you be willing to share our, our youth service? I've just recently started a job, and uh, I don't. I have one Sunday off a month. And uh, and so I said, hey, uh, would you like to share? And I'm like, man, I work. Uh, I've been working like most weekends, but let me check my schedule. And as soon as I checked it, it was like literally five minutes, I checked it and I was like, man, I'm off. <laughs> and people that know me, I can't lie. I can't lie. It's, it's hard. For me. Even if I try and lie, my, my wife sees right through me all the time. I try to, so there's no point trying to lie. And I said, sister, I'm available. Um, and not that I'm a well-known speaker. Um, a lot of my background ministry-wise was um, I worked uh, as a as a youth leader, or I'm calling a youth pastor, for about 12 years. Um, and then worship, I, I, I love to lead worship. Um, preaching is not kind of my go-to thing, but it'd be something that I can say is that I have a lot of experience in ministry. So as I share the Word of God tonight, it's not only the Word of God, but even my experiences and things that I've gone through in ministry as well. I also want to honor my pastor who I currently serve under, uh, pastor Fruin and First Lady Rebecca. You know, for allowing us to come, you know, and myself to speak, but also our youth. You know, it's uh, they they send their regards. Uh, Mum works tonight, and uh, we had a, a, a baby blessing today, so they're actually having lunch in their store. They're still there, and we, I said to the, to the sister now, just let the youth know. We'll give you guys 30 minutes to get some food from Golden Corral, and we're jumping in the van and we're following. So this is probably the fastest I've seen them eat. Um, but I said, you know what? Uh, we're not going to miss this opportunity. And, and when, uh, you know, our sister now said, you know, she let the youth know and those who are available, um, as you can see, those who are here today, those who are available, said, Let, let's do it. Let's, let's make it true. Yeah. One thing I learned in America is that uh, you need to make sure that you know traffic <laughs> and know your timings. You know, all the Hawaii, the America, BC, and New Zealand, traffic is, is nothing too bad. Coming to America, you need to know when to leave yeah. and when not to leave. I remember when we first moved to America and we moved up to Lake Arsenal, straight up the church would leave to come back to Lake Arsenal from Ontario. Normally a 40 minute drive would take an hour and a half to two hours because traffic and there's always something happening. So, you know, we kind of change it up. Once again, just knowing your times. So, uh, um, tonight I'm just, some of you may know me, uh, but I'm going to share just five quick things that might help you maybe a little bit more. Maybe it'll make you a little bit more comfortable with me tonight. Because some of you may know Johnny as this, or maybe you haven't heard of me. It's the first time you've seen this guy with a weird accent standing on stage. <laughs> um, but, uh, so my name is Jonathan uh, James Morisa. I'm one of five siblings, big family. I have about 15 nieces and nephews. Um, all my family are all in New Zealand. Um, I have, we have one son and I have one wife. Well, you are. <laughs> no, I have a, I'm, I'm happily married uh, to Crystal uh, Nalani. Uh, 
be speak for now, Marisa. We have one son. This little one that was running around swinging on the on the on the pole and running up and down the stairs. Yeah, that's our son. Um, but just five things that might help you get to know me a little bit better. Number one, I love steak. If you uh, if you want to find me at a restaurant, take me to Golden Corral and take me to that line where you can eat steak and I'm good. I remember the first time I met uh, Pastor OJ, Pastor OJ said to me, you have to take, uh, taste my uh, I think a steak sandwich if I remember correctly. And I'm still waiting on that and it's not because of him, it's because of me because I'm always first like, let's meet up. I'm like, okay. And I'm always like cancelling on it. But uh, I know one day we're going to go for that uh, steak sandwich that we talked about. <laughs> first thing is to know me, know me know that I love steak. Number two, second thing, it's not a lie when I say it, but normally when people call me and say, hey, um, how far are you? How far are you? My answer is normally, oh, I'm just around the corner, which means, you know, when you say you're around the corner, it means you're pretty much nearly here. Half an hour later, people are still waiting for me to turn up, and I am nowhere near. I'm just so used to saying, oh, yeah, I'm, nearly, I'm just around the corner. My wife knows this. As soon as she hears around the corner, she goes, oh, here we go. You know, here we go. Um, so, I may be around the corner, maybe a little bit further, but I'm not too far away. Number three, I'm a big, I'm not sure what kind of fans we have here today, but I'm a big Seahawks fan. Um, big Seahawks fan. People ask why my uh, grandparents, my mom's parents, actually lived and pastored um, in Seattle. And I lived there for about a year with them. Um, and they were the initial pastors at High Point. So they were, um, Abelu uh, Fotuali and Matasina were the initial pastors, then Ma'a, and then now we have um, Pastor Natia. But uh, long story short, that's why I'm a Seahawks fan. Um, love, love the Seahawks, even without Russell Wilson. I don't know what's going to happen this year. No one's looking at me, uh, no good, but yeah, we'll see what happens this year. Number four, I am real competitive. People that know me, I don't, I don't mind losing as long as I give it my all. Um, the late uh, Nana Intia, Nana Ini, or, or Crystal's grandmother, um, a lot of time we got to spend with Nana, we would be either doing Bible study, showing what the Word of God, we'd be doing prayer meeting or prayers. But the other thing that we would do when we had a lot of spare time was Lummi. We had a lot of Lummi. Nana is one of the best players at Lummi. But everyone else will take their take it easy. But I was like, oh no way, I'm gonna give Nana a run for her money. So I would play, you know, I would play just but she's really good. I would in out of like 10 hands, I'll probably normally win one or two. But she was she was pretty good. She was pretty good. Real competitive. And then the last thing, well, the last thing before we go to the word of God about me is that I love to see the good in people. Um, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing. It doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what your history. I love to just give people opportunity. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm just that type of person. My niece actually said to me, "You said, Uncle, I think the word is optimistic." I'm like, "Well, let me read up what that word means <laughs> in the dictionary." But that's just me. I have a heart for people. At the end of the day, no one's perfect. So yeah. why why are we striving to be you know like striving to yeah. find the perfect person or trying? But the thing is that as God gives us opportunity, that's the same thing. I, well, that's my, that's my take on it too. We need to give people opportunity. So just five things about me that hopefully get you to understand this man standing up here this evening. Um, but let, let's pray and then we'll go into the word of God. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for a time like this. Uh, we thank you that your word is your word. Your word is truth. And it, as you know, your word says... It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And today, Lord God, as I stand before um, your people or our family tonight here at Oceanside and those who are visiting, Father, bring forth the word. May it fall on good soil, Lord God. And may it bear fruit, Lord God. May it grow and bear fruit for you and your kingdom, Lord God. We thank you for tonight. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. 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 Our reading tonight. Before I, before I, uh, I go into the Word of God, I have two sermons that I like to preach. Amen. I preach either a 10-minute sermon or a 20-minute sermon. 
So because it's a youth service tonight, I think I'm going to go with a 10 minute sermon. That's okay with that thing. And the only reason why, uh, it's not so much about the time, but for me, I, one thing I've learned going to school is that young people or youth have a short attention span. Once you speak for 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, they need a break. That's what I was told in school to go get something to drink or get something to eat or whatever it might be. So I thought, hey, let's just stick with a shorter time. Uh, at the end of the day, the anointing of God, whether it's a five-minute sermon or a two-hour sermon, it doesn't change, right? The Word of God is still the Word of God, and it's still going to be an encouragement to us. So um, tonight, though, the Word of God comes from Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 1 to 19. Now, just for time's sake, we're not going to read the whole, um, you know, the whole paragraph or verse 1 to 19, but we're just going to read a few verses. Now, um, so Brother Wills, I don't know if you guys want to, can bring it up for us tonight, the word. If not, it's okay, I can read it out as well. Um, but just uh, for the reference for our family tonight, um, I'm going to read uh, verses 4 to 10, and then I'll read verses 17 to 19. Okay, so just bear with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 4 to 10. Jeremiah 1, verse 4 to 10. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. Am I, uh, I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you. And to say whatever I command you, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Let's jump to verse 17 to 19. Get yourself free. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Today, I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. Verse 19, they will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word this evening. If I don't know if you want to put it here in the near There's a lady from our church. Um, and, and this lady, man, she's such a she has such a funny personality. She reminds me of one of my aunties from New Zealand. And she's real straight up, real black and white. And this lady, I had only heard of what she was doing. When it came to her phone and let me tell you a little story so i was told that this lady if someone rings and she doesn't want to talk to them she'll just let it ring and she'll just kind of like, apparently some phone you can just turn it or just cancel the call uh, and uh so i was like oh no, that's probably just the story and at one time she, she stayed over at church and i got to see this in action the phone was ringing on the, on the table <laughs> see the name on the phone she's like oh and she just let it just let the phone ring just let the phone ring she didn't know who was calling until she got up but when she seen she was like uh, I don't want to speak to her our message tonight is entitled he's calling can you repeat after me say he's calling he's calling you know in the story that we that I shared and read tonight, um, one of the main, well, the main person in here, and as the book is, is uh, titled Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah, we get to read, you know, if you read through Jeremiah and do a bit of study, Jeremiah was a young Israelite prophet. He was called to speak to Judah, specifically to Judah and to uh, Israel. Some people note you know, Jeremiah to be this weeping prophet because the message that he portrayed or had to share was a real tough message to share with. 
today I want to bring to you three things to help understand, to help get you prepared for that call. As I said, with this lady at our church, she wasn't quite prepared. She didn't really want to talk to, to this person that was calling. But tonight, I really believe, and this is titled to young people, I really believe God is calling you. Yes, also to our parents, to our families, but young people, this message is specifically for you tonight. He's calling. Verse 4 says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, and verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Verse 4 says, The word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. What does this mean? If something comes to you or meets you, you you're now going to be kind of uh, face to face with that, right? You're meeting up with that. Another word that I was reading through different versions and trying to get a better understanding. Jeremiah had to have an encounter. Jeremiah had to have an encounter with God. You know, as I was looking for a definition, you know, of encounter, just to help break it down for our young people, young people, an encounter is an unexpected meeting that you have with someone or something. Now, an unexpected meeting that you have with someone or something. Now, most most of us, you know, not only our young ones, but even some of our parents and, and older folk, a lot of us were raised in godly families, right? A lot of us were raised in church, right? Yeah. It's as a Samoan kid, man. I if there's one thing I remember: you'd get up early, do your bed, get your clothes on. In New Zealand, it's much different. We have to wear ties, it's kind of more your traditional. Uh, my wife had to get me used to kind of dressing down a little bit. This is my dress down. Maybe it's not quite dressed down, but this is the closest I can get because I'm just so used to wearing a tie and a, and a jacket. But for us, we were raised in, with God or kind of knowing God. But you know what? The honest truth is it's not enough just to know it's not enough just to kind of know him. You know, a lot of times, and let's, let's be honest, you know, a lot of times the only reason why I went to church as a young person was because my parents told me. I didn't really want to go. I loved the music. The music was like, pump me, like, oh, it's awesome. But that was about it. didn't really want to go. I remember we had two services. We had a morning service and then we'd have an evening service. And I would always go to the morning service, but the evening service, I used to always like make an excuse so I didn't have to go to church. And, and the reason why, because the evening service time, normally that's when, uh, you know, we watch rugby in New Zealand, right? So rugby would come on in a Sunday afternoon. Ah, so, you know, my parents get here, well, oh, mom, dad, I think I've got a sore tummy and I have to go to the church. Ah. And so I would make an excuse to stay back, right? And then I would watch the, the rugby and feel bad after and pray to God for forgiveness after. But, you know, the whole thing, I, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that a lot of times we just do things out of obedience because we're just listening to our parents, right? But, you know, even as young people, you know, you need to even have an accountable God. You know, there's, I really believe that there's something called, an, there's a difference between just an encounter and a personal encounter, right? Because right now, we can be sitting in this place and we encounter God, right? But still, you need as individuals, we need as individuals to have your own encounter with God. You know, young people, you know, just as Jeremiah had an encounter with God, you and I need to have an encounter with God. The first point for tonight is have an encounter with God. In Genesis chapter 32, you know, there's a story about um, but Jacob, where Jacob goes and he meets his brother that he hasn't seen for about 20 years, right? And, and the reason why he hasn't seen his, his brother for this 20 years is that he cheated his brother. So Jacob goes and, and as the story continues, he, he lets his family, he lets his flock go forward. And uh, Jacob is just standing alone, just him. And right at that moment, when it was just him, Jacob has an encounter with God. Not just any encounter, 
but he has a personal encounter with God. Jacob, through that encounter with God, three things that stands out from an encounter. Firstly, he gets to understand his identity. Secondly, he gets to understand God. But thirdly, he also gets to understand himself more. You know, through our encounter, through our encounter with God, you get to really understand not only who you are in Christ, you get to understand Him even more. But also, you may not even, you think you may know yourself, but even by having that encounter with God, you even get to understand who you are and who you're meant to be with your calling in God. So number one this morning or this evening, firstly, is having an encounter with God. In verse 6, it says, after, you know, God speaks to Jeremiah and says to him, you know, I knew you before you were born. I, you know, I chose, I appointed you to all these nations. Then Jeremiah says, well, verse 6, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. He says, I don't know how to speak. I am too young. The second point I want to make today is Jeremiah's response. Or le taliatu a Jeremiah. You know, when I think about Jeremiah's response, it was simply an excuse. It was an excuse. Who likes to make excuses? <laughs> I'm getting half hands, right? <laughs> but the honest truth is, we all like to make excuses. You don't want to go somewhere? Oh, I'm not here. You don't want to get up for work? Oh, boss, I'm a bit sick. <laughs> we make excuses, right? Excuses is actually something of the flesh, right? I love how it says in Matthew 26, you know, how it says that the spirit is willing. Uh, the spirit is willing, but it's the flesh, right? It's our flesh that's weak. And a lot of times the reason why we have a lot of excuses is because we're a bit too fleshy than we are in the spirit. But it's really important that when we're thinking about our responses that if you think about what Jeremiah said, you know, his excuse right up was, man, I can't do it. I can't speak. I don't know the words to, to use. It's funny because in our youth group and in our church, our young people, if you meet them out in the car park, oh, they'll be talking. Oh, oh man, you know, this week was, oh, no, oh. and he gets them to come up. Hey, you want to come and say something in front of the church? <laughs> right, right? Have nothing to say at all. Right? To me, it's an excuse. Right? If you can speak outside in front of 20 of your friends, I'm sure you can stand up here and do the same too. The thing is, is that we like to make excuses when it doesn't suit us. But when it does suit us, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, your friend, I had a, I had such a great day. And, you know? but the, the thing is, is that when it works for you, then it's good. But what I'm trying to get us to understand here is, our response cannot just be an excuse, right? As we heard about with our theme or the message today, God is calling you, right? God is calling you and I. And it's important that we know how to respond. God then says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, don't say you can't. Don't be afraid. And then the Lord reaches out, he touches his mouth, puts a word in his mouth. Try it now. Try and speak now. Sometimes we need a little practical touch from God. <laughs> and I know back in the islands, you know, we don't listen. It's like, Psh, right? And if I don't want, Psh, oh, if I want to live, I, oh. Sometimes we need that practical, Psh, right? So we can kind of, and, and I'm not saying a, a physical slap, but sometimes, sometimes for us, we need that little nudge, right? We need that kind of push to say, you can actually do it. Trust in me. You can actually do it. But what God was trying to get him to understand was, don't, don't worry about what you can't do, what you are capable of. Amen. Trust in me. Amen. I've given you his, how do we know that he even gave him? Maybe God just said, I've given you his, but he gave him nothing. He just said, Phew. if there's anything that God gave him was belief. Wow. To believe in himself. Yeah. To believe that, you know what, I might be young. I might be as young as our front row here, or as old as the, are you further back? It doesn't matter, age is just a number. Age is just a number. But at the end of the day, when God calls you, you better be ready. 
And I'm not saying you have to be the perfect person. No. God will call you exactly where you are and how you are. Sometimes you say, oh, you know, Pastor, I ain't ready to be used in the worship team. I, I can play, but I don't think my life is exactly where it needs to be. You think, you think our life is perfect? That's why we stand up here. <laughs> We're trying as well. I, my, I, I always used to hear my dad, every time he preaches, it, he used to say, you know, you have your struggles, but believe it or not, even as a pastor, I have things that I struggle with. But the things that we need to know and understand is that it's our trusting in God. It's to trust in Him. Not to trust in our flesh and our feelings. Sometimes our feelings tell us, mm, no, I can't. I don't think so. I'm good. It's really trusting in God. And Jeremiah got to hear what God said. And for Jeremiah, there was a good chance for him to listen. Not only just listen, but to hear God. You know, there's a big difference between listening and hearing. Listen, you just kind of hear it, and it's like, oh, okay, all oh, good, all right, have a good week, see ya. Hearing is, okay, that's the word of God, so how do I put it into practice? Oh, I do it this way, and I do it that way, and I do it, oh, that's how I'm going to go about my week. The difference is, is the practical side of things. Because we can just listen, and then just listen, and then just listen, and then just listen, but no action, right? But hearing is listening plus the action. Listening plus the action. First point, an encounter with God. Second is how we respond. The third thing that I want to talk about tonight, third and last point, verse 17, it says, Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them what I commanded you to do. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. The first line says, get yourself ready. In other words, preparation. Preparation or prep. You know, when I, when I, uh, when I was studying and this word preparation came to me, the first thing I could think of was cooking. Because you know when you're cooking and getting ready to make food, there's a lot of preparation. You cook, uh, you cut onions, cut tomatoes, slice cucumbers, and so many other things that you have to cut up, whatever it is. But there's a lot of preparation, right? Preparation, preparation, preparation. Because if you don't prep, then maybe your your chicken will, will get uh, overcooked. Maybe, you know, you, you might burn something, but if you prepare, Something like that. Add onions, add a bit of spices, you know, a little bit of you know salt, you know. But the thing is, is that it's all about the preparation of how you cook the perfect meal, right? I believe God was saying the same thing to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, yes, you might be young, yes, you might be a youth, you might be a young prophet, but I am preparing you, young man. Stand up and just say what I want to tell you to say. He goes on to verse 18, he says, Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall. These three things, an iron city, a pillar, a bronze wall, they are real strong stuff, right? These are, these are real strong things that's hard to bust down. When God is saying that I've made you into these one, two, three, he's trying to tell you that you're strong enough to withstand whatever's coming your way. Not because of your strength, it's not because of anything that you have because at the end of the day we're never enough but it's because of what he can do through you he goes into the last verse and he says today he says they will fight you but not overcome you for I am with you and I will rescue you you know ministry is no playground you know, some of, some of us may think, man, you know, ministry, oh, you know, church is cool, so. but you know, the honest truth is that ministry is, a, is so much more than that. It's like, the way I see it, it's more like a battlefield, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, you know, as we even heard tonight, you know, the God of this world, Satan, yeah. he don't want you to reach that calling 
that God has over your life, right? He has so many things that He's planned for you. He wants you not to prosper. He doesn't want to see you blessed. He doesn't want to see you reach where God's called you to be. But tonight, our young people, I just simply want to encourage us and, and get us to understand that simply through that encounter that you have with God, through the response that you're supposed to give, know that God is preparing you. In closing tonight, I want to close with something real simple, and I want to get the worship team to, uh, they're going to sing a song for us tonight as we go into a time of prayer as well. And I just want to pray with everyone tonight. The theme for tonight was He's Calling. But I want to add on something at the end just to close off with. He is calling, will you answer? That lady that I said in the beginning, she didn't answer. She, she saw who was calling was like, oh, I'm good. I'm not going to answer. But to my young people, God is calling you. The challenge is, are you going to answer? Let's all stand tonight. Worship team, uh, if we can play that song and make room, if we can sing and play that song tonight. I'm going to ask all our young people tonight, I want you to all come forward. Let's just flood this place here tonight. If you're a, uh, no matter how young you are, youth, young adults, can you guys all make your way forward as a worship team just prepares a song for us tonight? Here is where I, was, I just want to pray with you all tonight. So we can just make your way, kids, make your way forward, young people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus.
we have no idea what's in their heart. But if there's one thing that we do know, Lord, that you see, you hear, you know everything. Whatever need that they may have in their heart tonight, Lord God, we pray that you may meet that need, Lord God. Secondly, Lord God, tonight, I just pray, Lord, that you may help them understand they are calling in you, Lord God, that you're calling them, even at a young age, Lord God. As you called so many people in the Bible at young ages, Lord, that you can use them right where they are, Lord God. Use them mightily for you and your will, Lord God. We thank you tonight, Lord God. Bless them, bless their families, bless their parents, Lord God, tonight. We thank you for each and every one of them, Lord God. We praise you. We give you the highest praise tonight. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Your precious holy name we pray in us. Thank you, Lord. Someone out there, bless them tonight. Praise One last thing before we take a seat tonight, I don't want to miss this opportunity. Two things I want to pray for tonight. Firstly, if this is the first time that you've stood in front of you know a crowd like this, or you've come to stand in front of the altar. And you want to make a decision to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Maybe this is new to you. Maybe this is the first time you've heard the message of the cross. Tonight, this prayer is for you. Secondly, maybe you're someone that served the church. Maybe you're someone that's been here for many years. Maybe you've just joined last week, whatever it may be. Maybe you're at a point that you want to recommit your life to the Lord. I want to pray for you tonight as well. So two prayers. We're going to pray firstly for those who want to give their lives to the Lord. And secondly, we're going to pray a prayer of recommitment tonight. Praise the Lord. Why don't you just close your eyes where you are, bow your heads. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we stand here tonight, Lord, you understand and you know each and every one that's here tonight. First, Lord, God, we'll pray tonight if this is the first time that someone stood in front of a crowd like this, Lord God, and in their heart they've made a decision that they want to receive you as their Lord and Savior. Father, you may meet their needs tonight, Lord God. A new chapter in their walk, Lord God. The past, yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. The future is ahead of them, Lord God. And as they commit themselves to you tonight, Lord God, to make you their Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that you may just bless them, bless this new journey ahead, Lord God. You know, order their steps wherever they step into, Lord God. Help them with each and every step. That with you, all things are possible. Possible, no matter what may come our way, Lord. As the song says, Lord, our life is in your hands. In your hands alone, Lord God. Tonight, secondly, I pray for someone that's standing here tonight that they have already received you as their Lord and Savior, but they want to recommit with you. Lord, no one's perfect. Father, we all fall short of your glory. And tonight, anyone that's standing here tonight that has that need in their heart, they want to recommit their life to you, I pray for them tonight, Lord God. A new beginning for them as well, Lord God. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. The future ahead of us, Lord God. And we thank you. I pray you may bless them, Lord God. Bless them abundantly tonight. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Amen and Amen. Bless you guys tonight. to this music and as I was worshiping the Lord just said you know what you don't own the rights to anything that's going on 
You know, sometimes we want to claim it. Like, what's your claim to faith? But then the Lord said, look, everything that was spoken tonight kind of fell in place. You don't own the right to the music. You don't own the right to my presence. It's there for you. Johnny was speaking, and the Lord said, you don't own the right to the calling. Because sometimes we think, that's, I own that calling. That's mine. I'm supposed to be up there. But the Lord said, you don't own that right. It's my calling. You just fulfill it. And as John was speaking, the Lord said, you don't own the right to my word. And I like how Jeremiah says, the Lord says, Jeremiah, just go out there. Because I'm going to touch your mouth. And you're going to speak my words. Because a lot of times we think that, oh, Macaulay, mm, not for me. That's right. You're not worthy. You are not worthy of the calling of the Lord. It's his calling. But he equips you. He makes you worthy. You don't, we don't own anything. Everything is a cover. Everything is a cover. But one thing the Lord reminded me tonight, if you're not under my covering, you're going to mess up everything I give you. You're going to mess up my calling. Because there you are. You think it's your calling. But if you're not under his covering, everything is going to fall apart. Yeah. You're going to be lost seeking the Lord. Yeah. And one thing I read this morning that kind of wraps everything up, it was a story of a, 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 a young man and his papa. They went walking. And then as they were walking, getting further and further away from the house, the papa told the young man, son, do you know where you're at? He said, well, papa, I, I don't. And then papa told his son, I guess you're lost, right? And then the young man told his papa, papa, I am never lost when I am with you. Because sometimes we try to uh, pursue God's calling, like Jeremiah did, or hear God's calling, and in the, in the in the pursuing of his calling, we feel lost. But God said tonight, it's not your calling. I will put you there. <laughs> I will give you what you say. Yeah. Don't be afraid to have a personal encounter with the Lord. Don't be afraid. And don't be afraid to respond to the Lord. To respond to the Lord. And what was the last thing? Huh? Prepare. Prepare yourself for God's calling. Prepare yourself. And then one of the last things that I, the Spirit pressed upon my heart. And I want you to know this, Pastor. You don't know the time. You don't know the time. And as John was speaking, I said, Lord, you're right. We don't know anything. We don't. Everything we use the words that we see, the anointing that falls down, it's not ours. Young people, you got to know. You got to know for yourself. Jeremiah was young when God was calling him. Samuel was young when God was calling him. I was young when God was calling me. But some of you are God's calling you right now. Don't wait to be old like Johnny. That's just <laughs> or like Pastor OJ. <laughs> you don't own the time. Redeem the time when you're young. Let God just speak into your life. And then you can say like Samuel say, Lord, speak. Your young servant's mind is listening. Because that's what the God, God needs right now. See, these views are supposed to be filled with young people. Young people that are desiring the calling of the Lord to be used of the Lord. Right? Young people, young kids, now is the time to listen to the Lord. Don't think you're too young. Listen to that word. Listen to that word. You gotta have an encounter. You got to respond to God and you got to be prepared. That's right. I can't prepare you. Your parents can teach you, but they can't uh, say yes for you. Say amen, parents. 
I love that new uh, music that's behind the background. I said, is that Johnny Steve right there? Because I'm going to steal that. And Johnny about that, I'm going to say, hey, play the music when I preach. <laughs> You know, these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, New Zealand and, uh, the Kiwis and the Aussies and, you know, every time they, they, they get up to speak, you know, I just felt like the, the anointing is so much on them because of their, of their, uh, accent. Because, <laughs> we, you know, I had a friend that we went to seminary together. We love, we always ask him to read the scripture, right? Because he announces the words like, you know, and he likes the uh, King James version. I say, yeah, get it, right? <laughs> Us Americans, we love the, uh, you know, what up, dude? <laughs> you know, but thank God, because God uses us no matter what our background is, no matter if you're from New Zealand, Australia, or even here in America, God still uses you. So thank you, John. Thank you. That was an awesome word. I love that 10 minute sermon. You were over by 10 minutes, but it's like, <laughs> don't say that you're going to do a 10 minute sermon. And then you go 20 minutes. Because <laughs> we got to hold you. Like, hey. Right? But, anyways, that was a good word. Manael Upule Bea Samoy Tato you know, for before I really knew Crystal and, uh, and Johnny, I thought that Crystal's first name was Marissa. Uh, so Lisa, hey, Johnny and Marissa. It's not Marissa. It's Crystal. That's their last name. Oh, you know. So, uh, you know, I think I might have called her Marissa one day. She might have here. That's good. God bless you guys. God bless all the people. Uh, how about a hand for the new from Ontario? And have her OJ and, and uh, Pastor OJ and. His friends that came. I always uh, kid that OJ bring his bodyguards when they come with him. So watch over him. Because you know OJ is single, so they gotta watch over him. So make sure that uh, a godly woman, uh, <laughs> only a godly woman, uh, will turn OJ's head. God bless you. Thank you, uh, worship team. Uh, thank you for the young people that are here. And also for our parents and our older folks from
our children, Lord. Help them, Lord God, in the ministry that you have called them to serve. Father, your blessing upon Crystal and Johnny and uh, Leonidas and also the youth from, from uh, Ontario and also Bertoima's church, Lord God. Bless him in the ministry there. Bless our young people here, our friends that are visiting tonight with us. Your blessing upon them, Lord God. Especially our senior citizens that are able to be with us to just enjoy the service, Lord God. That's that you be with them tonight also. Father, we ask that you bless the food that the youth has prepared for us. Bless the hands that made it, Lord God. And help us, Lord, to just fellowship and give you all the glory and honor that is yours and yours alone. In Jesus' name, and all the saints say amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's go and fellowship. Thank you.